Welcome back guys, in this video I'll be looking at 3.1, the normal distribution. 3.1 represents chapter 3, section 1 of the Pearson A-Level Maths Applied Maths Year 2 textbook. I'm going to start this teaching video by going through what is a random variable. A random variable represented by capital letters X or Y or Z etc takes on values that are outcomes of an experiment. For example, let x be the number of heads you get when tossing two fair coins. So I've got two fair coins, I'm going to toss them, boom. Okay, both of the coins land face up. Now, the possible outcomes I could have is two tails, tail head, head tail, or two heads. So for this particular experiment, the number of heads I could possibly achieve are zero heads, one head, or two heads. So x takes on the values zero, one, and two. A random variable can be discrete or continuous. A discrete random variable takes on a finite number of values, a fixed number of values. A continuous random variable takes on an infinite number of values. Now, in this chapter, you'll be exposed to a continuous random variable that takes on a special distribution. And this distribution is called the normal distribution. Have a look at this particular mathematical notation x squiggle n. This means that x takes on a normal distribution. This is a Greek letter called mu. This represents the mean. And this over here, sigma squared, represents the variance. Now to be more specific, mu represents the population mean. Sigma squared represents the population variance. And sigma represents the population standard deviation. Okay, let's have a look at the properties of the normal distribution. Number one, it has a bell-shaped curve. Number two, the bell-shaped curve is symmetric about the mean. The mean is equal to the mode, which is equal to the median for a normal distribution due to its symmetry. Number three, the area under the bell-shaped curve represents probability. And the total area is equal to one because we know that probabilities add up to one. There are some key percentages that you need to know for a normal distribution. So here are three bell-shaped curves. Let's have a look at the first one. Approximately 68% of the data lies within one standard deviation from the mean. Approximately 95% of the data lies within two standard deviations from the mean. And approximately 99.7% percent of the data lies within three standard deviations from the mean. So make sure you take a note of these key percentages. You need to know this for the exam. Let's have a look at example number one. The diameters of a rivet produced by a particular machine, x millimeter, is modelled as x following a normal distribution. The mean is 8, so mu is equal to 8. The variance is 0 0.2 squared, so sigma squared is equal to 0 0.2 squared. Hence, the standard deviation sigma is just the square root of the variance. This will be 0 0.2. Find part A, probability x is greater than 8. I'm going to start by drawing a bell-shaped curve centered at the mean. So in this case, the mean is 8. So the bell-shaped curve is centred at 8. Probability x is greater than 8 represents a specific shading, and that shading is the shading over here. We know that the total area under the bell-shaped curve is equal to 1, so half the area is 0 0.5. Hence, probability x is greater than 8 is equal to 0 0.5. Moving on to part b. We want to find the probability that x is between 7.8 and 8.2. So I'm going to start by drawing a bell-shaped curve centred at the mean. In this particular case, the mean is 8. So the bell-shaped curve is centred at 8. Now 7.8 is to the left of 8. It will be roughly here. And 8.2 is to the right of 8, it will be roughly over here. Now if I want to go from 8 to 8.2, I must add on 
0 0.2 and if I want to go from 8 to 7.8 I need to subtract 0 0.2 but the 0 0.2 ladies and gents represents the standard deviation sigma so over here we have a one standard deviation from the mean hence this particular area must be 68 percent which is equivalent to 0 0.68 hence this probability is equal to 0 0.68 Let's have a look at example number two. The arm spans of a group of year five pupils, x centimeter, are modeled as x following a normal distribution with mean 120 and variance 16. This implies that mu is equal to 120 and sigma squared is equal to 60. The standard deviation sigma is equal to the square root of the variance so square root of 16 is 4. Find part A probability x is between 116 and 124 and part B probability x is between 112 and 128. Let's have a look at part A. I'm going to start by drawing a bell-shaped curve centered at the mean. In this particular case, the mean is 120. So the bell-shaped curve is centred at 120. 116 will be to the left of 120, it will be somewhere around here. And 124 will be to the right of 120, it will be somewhere around here. OK, to get from 120 to 124, we need to add on 4. And to get from 120 to 116, you need to subtract 4. But ladies and gents, the 4 represents the standard deviation. So in this particular case, we have a 1 standard deviation away from the mean. Hence, this particular shading represents 68%, which is 0 0.68. Therefore, this probability is just 0 0.68. Moving on to part B. We want to work out the probability that x is between 112 and 128. I'm going to start by drawing a bell-shaped curve centred at the mean. In this particular case, the mean is 120. 112 is to the left of 120, it will be somewhere around here. And 128 is to the right of 120, it will be somewhere around here. Okay, to get from 120 to 128, we need to add on 8. And to get from 120 to 112, we need to subtract 8. But 8 is technically two standard deviations. 2 times 4 is 8. So 2 sigma here, 2 sigma over here. So in this particular case, we realise that we have two standard deviations away from the mean. Hence, this particular shading must be 95%, which represents 0 0.95. Therefore, this probability, ladies and gents, is 0 0.95. Let's have a look at an exam style question. The weights of a group of door mice, d grams, are modelled as d following a normal distribution with mean mu. So the mean is mu. And a variance 25. So sigma squared is equal to 25. The standard deviation sigma is just the square root of the variance. So sigma is equal to the square root of the variance. So square root of 25 is 5. If 97.5% of door mice weigh less than 70 grams, that means probability D is less than 70 is equal to 97.5%, find mu. Okay, I'm going to start by drawing a bell-shaped curve centred at the mean mu. So here is my bell-shaped curve. It is centred at the mean mu. 
Now the same t in grams has to be positioned to the right of mu so that this whole area to the left of same t looks like 97.5%. Okay. This particular area has to be 100% take away 97.5% and this is 2.5%. Okay. Now by symmetry, if this part is 2.5%, I can label 2.5% over here as well. So this part over here is 2.5%. So 2.5% plus 2.5% is 5%. Hence the middle area has to be 95%. Okay, this is looking fantastic. We know that approximately 95% of the data lies within two standard deviations from the mean. So I can label two standard deviations over here and two standard deviations over here. This will help me form an equation involving mu and sigma. So mu plus two sigma must equal 70. Okay, we know what sigma is, it is five. So I've got mu plus 2 times 5 is equal to 70. Hence mu plus 10 is equal to 70. Therefore mu must equal 70 take away 10 which is 60. If you found this video useful please don't forget to subscribe.